Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, I'm going to show you how you can create your own podcast. There's a number of steps involved and each one of these, if you do them the right way, will ensure that you have the best quality outcome, which will give your podcast a chance of standing out amongst a very extreme competition that we're facing right now. Before we get on with all that technical information, I thought I'd have a quick discussion as to why we're seeing such a an increase in popularity of podcasting right now in 2019. Certainly, it's been around in some format or another since the 1980s. It rose to a significant amount of popularity with the advent of the iPod in 2004 and has been growing steadily since. But the last couple of years, we've seen it really take on a whole new dimension. Apple, in fact, quoted that they have around 660,000 shows on their iTunes podcasting platform, which represents around 28 million unique episodes. So that's so much content that's finding its way onto the podcasting arena. And that's more of a reason for any brand that hasn't ventured into this sphere of marketing to really start considering podcasting quite seriously. So if you already have a YouTube channel, if you're dominant in Instagram or LinkedIn, it's really becoming more and more important to think about whether you can tailor your content in such a way that it will work in the medium of podcasting. Now, just before we get into the technicality and and how to record the best quality audio, a quick discussion about the types of content that generally work on podcasts. You can have entertainment-based content, which can be in the form of comedy. It could be a review show on movies or audio, or it could be informational about how to use products. But whatever medium you choose or whatever area you choose to engage in, it usually works best when you have a number of guests. So unlike what I'm doing right now, where I'm just talking to my audience directly into the camera, which is what I tend to do on my YouTube channel, it really works well when you can engage either on a regular basis, uh, alternate guests, or if you have a co-host to get in front of the microphone with you on a weekly basis. I have my own podcast for the Touch Technology Review channel, but I'm not really invested in it as yet. I'm probably gonna be expanding in that area much further in 2019. But when I have done my podcast, I'm always engaging with or inviting co-hosts or guests to appear on the podcast because it really works well to have the multiple point of views in that audio format. So. I guess before you touch upon the whole technical side of the podcasting, it's really important to come up with the creative concept, the brand name, the uh, talent that you wanna be engaging with on the show, and having an idea of the podcasting format. So it's really important to have that established before you get onto the next step, which is creating the audio for your podcast. Now, I've got here with me today some equipment that I typically use on my podcasts, and I'm gonna talk through each piece of equipment and give you some options at different types of budgets. Now, the first thing I've got, and the most important thing, is the microphone. I've got a Rode NT1, which we'll talk about in just a moment. There's also some headphones so that I can listen to and monitor the audio as I'm speaking to make sure the quality is right and there's no distracting background noises that I need to worry about. I've got an audio interface, and that's pretty much the three main components you need to get started to produce professional quality audio for your podcast. Now, in terms of the microphone, I've got a Rode NT1 Studio Condenser Microphone. This microphone would set you back around $300 depending on where you live. I really like the audio quality of this microphone. It's got a great overall sound. It captures the low ends and the high and the mid-range really well. And it's very dynamic, crisp, and clean. It also has the audio source from one direction. So it captures audio from the front and minimizes all the audio coming in from the back, which is great for reducing background noise. And if you have multiple guests in your podcast, it reduces the echo sound of that guest coming through to the microphone. So having a one directional microphone really makes a difference when you have multiple guests. Now there's no point purchasing a high quality microphone if you don't follow certain principles when recording audio into a microphone. The further away you stand or sit from a microphone, the more echo you're going to get into the signal. So as I sit back here, you'll notice there's a lot of room noise and my voice sounds really echoey and it almost defeats the purpose of having purchased 
a professional quality microphone. So you need to make sure that you're sitting up nice and close to the microphone. Usually extend your fingers apart like this and point towards the microphone. And generally that uh, represents a you know five to seven inch distance from the microphone and talk directly to the front of the microphone or slightly off to the side and you'll get a really nice close and personal sound so that's a little bit about microphone technique you need to experiment it with a bit by having some headphones on you can really hear the difference that you're making and certainly by wearing your headphones during your podcast you'll notice if you drift away and it'll prompt you to get back closer to the microphone which really takes some getting used to but you really need to think about that in order to ensure that you're getting the best possible quality sound for yourself and even for your guests when you have them in your own podcasting studio. So quite often I find that when I have guests in, I'll be reminding them to get close to the microphone because it's not often a natural instinct to sit in one position for too long. The other thing to keep in mind that when you purchase a microphone such as the Rode NT1, it uses an XLR input which won't go directly into your computer. So you'll need a audio recorder or audio interface in order to record the audio. So I've got the NT1 plugged in directly to the Zoom H4 audio recorder and it's recording onto an SD card directly. And there's also an option to plug in a second XLR microphone for when I have a podcast guest. So that's one way of recording audio and perhaps the easiest. If you wanna use your computer to record your audio, you'll need to get a sound card such as the PreSonus AudioBox USB. There's the Red Scarlet. There's a number of different options here and they'll come in at around $100 to $150 for two XLR inputs. And certainly if you're going to have more guests and you need more microphones, you can purchase uh, bigger audio cards with more inputs. These then connect to your computer via USB and that will be the interface between your audio gear and your computer. And you can use software such as QuickTime or GarageBand if you've got a Mac and there's also Ableton Lite and different types of free audio software that you can use on a Windows computer. Now, if you don't have a budget for this type of setup, you can get away with a USB microphone which will plug directly into your computer. And these can set you back anywhere from $50 to $150 or beyond, depending on which brand you go for. Rode have one. And there's also one from Audio Technica, which has both the USB and an XLR input. So there's quite a few options that sit around $100 or below that will really be the most cost-effective way of having a single microphone input in your podcast. When it comes to having multiple guests, you can add multiple USB microphones into your audio software. If you create an aggregate audio device, which is a topic for another tutorial, but the easiest way is certainly to get an audio interface which has multiple microphone inputs. So that's the audio side of setting up a podcast. The next step to consider is mastering your audio. So once you've recorded that audio file, you need to bring it in some audio editing software. If you're a member of the Adobe Creative Cloud, then you can get access to Audition or you could even use Premiere Pro to edit the audio and use all of the filters available in those software titles. If you're an Apple user, you could use GarageBand or if you're more serious about your audio, you could purchase Logic Pro for a couple of hundred dollars, which has access to more professional editing tools. But certainly even the free software such as GarageBand will give you just about everything you need to sweeten your audio. So if you have recorded your audio with reasonable quality gear, as I mentioned in step one, then editing your audio is going to be relatively straightforward. You'll simply need to apply a few filters in order to achieve the best possible outcome. The first one I tend to run through the audio is a noise reduction filter because even though you're using very high quality audio gear, there's still going to be some noise present in the signal. So you can run some very light noise reduction to remove the background hissing and even take care of any unforeseen noises that you just couldn't get rid of in the original recording, such as an air conditioner or any kind of distracting 
humming or rumbling sound that might appear in the audio. Once you've applied the noise reduction, I tend to apply some parametric EQ, which allows me to control the bass and the treble in the recording to help it stand out further. Then you can run a compressor over it to make it really punch out and give that broadcast quality sound. So once you've applied those basic filters, it's time to go in and cut into the audio itself, cleaning up any dead space, any noise that might appear in the recording, any errors that you've made. Certainly when you're starting out in podcasting, uh, your first few recordings will have a lot of mistakes. You might even find that you're repeating words, umming and ahhing excessively. And if you're doing that, you'll probably learn over time to stop doing it. But in the first instance, if you want to get rid of those, just use the slice tool in the audio editing software to cut them out and clean up the audio to give you the best possible quality result. Okay, so once you've taken care of the audio quality, you've got an audio file ready to go. It's now time to upload your podcast so that it can be sent out and distributed to all of the major podcast platforms. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. For my personal podcast, I do it the manual way where I create my own XML file and host it on my own server. And I'll go in and submit my podcast to iTunes, for example. And I sometimes distribute my podcast on other platforms such as SoundCloud, and I can upload directly into that. So that's one way of doing it. However, podcasting is now becoming so much more pervasive, as I mentioned before, and there's a number of different environments available from iTunes to SoundCloud to Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Just Alexa, and so many more. So if you wanna get your podcast on all of these platforms in one go, you can use online providers such as Buzzsprout or Podbean. Now they have some free plans which allow you to host up to five hours of audio content. And once you upload them into their control panel, you can submit them to the various different podcasting platforms automatically. So your podcast can be heard within their own apps on Buzzsprout and Podbean, but they can also be extended out into other platforms. However, once you exceed that five hours, you'll need to take up a paid plan, which usually costs around 10 to $20 per month. Now, if you don't wanna have that ongoing expense, you can do it the manual way, the way I do it. If you've got a WordPress website, there's some plugins available that let you upload your audio and submit to iTunes and Google Play and various other podcasting platforms. And all of this can be done freely just by uploading your audio file and using the podcast plugins. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna learn how to do that. And there's going to be much more content produced on podcasting as it's becoming more and more popular. And on a final note is just a discussion about the consistency. So I mentioned very briefly about the importance of coming up with a concept and a blueprint for your podcast so that your listeners can become familiar with the type of content you're creating, uh, the importance of trying to engage other people to get involved, to have them on as co-hosts or guests so that you can have those multiple points of view. And on the final point, it's really important to have a think about posting frequency. So if you're committing to creating a podcast, trying to have a commitment to at least a weekly, fortnightly or monthly schedule so that you can ensure that over the long term you build up a significant amount of content to bring more and more listeners and increase the chance of uh, you know creating a, a fan base behind your podcast engagement which can then lead to so many more opportunities but certainly in the short term if you're not really sure where you're going with your podcast it's just worth coming up with a few ideas getting some equipment that i mentioned earlier and just start recording and see how they sound you can start with one of the podcast platforms or try and expand to all social media platforms and uh, you never know where it might take you. So that's all I really wanted to cover off on today. I think there's a lot of information there. I could probably expand each one of those topics out into their own video. So I might look at doing that over the coming months. If you want to get access to these videos and much more, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. Also, if you've got any questions about what you've heard today, feel free to put those questions in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.